Hi, and welcome to Biostock Studio. In December, it was announced that Robeck were to acquire privately owned Chosa Oncology, an acquisition that was completed on the 18th of January this year. Like Rovac, Chosa, as implied by the name, are active within oncology, where it focuses on developing more efficient and tolerable treatments for cancer. Here to tell us more is CEO Peter Bull-Jensen. Welcome, Peter. Thanks a lot, and thank you for allowing us to present here today. Of course. So let me start by quite a basic question. What is Chosa Oncology? So Chosa Oncology is really about precision oncology. And uh, I know many, many people know this, but Still, I say that there's a lot of products out there and in hard to treat cancers, many of those products or most of those products only work in one quarter of the patients. And for the doctor, you can say there are actually 300 approved products and which product to choose is really a, a big problem, of course, uh, also for the patient. And if you choose wrongly, the tumor continues to grow and you actually, you may even hamper uh, uh, cure, cure likelihood. What we are about is to sort of provide a precision tool to one of the most effective anti-cancer agents that's ever been and put it into also a formulation where it has a less, less toxicity than, than we're used to. And that's what CHOSA is about. And one part of your treatment concept is Liplastis, which is a special formulation of a chemotherapy called cisplatin. Correct. So what are the benefits of your technology? So first of all, cisplatin is one of the most used uh, cancer drugs. And even today, albeit it's been sort of developed 50 years ago, it's one of the most and still growing in, in use. And there are some serious problems with, with cisplatin. First of all, of course, that it doesn't work all the time. So if it only works in certain percent of the cases, the patient get all the, you can say, side effects. Every patient gets side effects. What has been developed is a liposomal formulation of cisplatin. And liposomal is like a, a bubble with, with cisplatin inside, very tiny, 100 nanometer. And it's basically in its lipid composition, it's, it's, it's made so it opens its cisplatin content in the presence of the tumor. So you can get more targeted towards the tumor and less towards the bone marrow or the normal tissues. And what we see is less toxicity to our patients that have been given it, and also apparently a higher efficacy. So we think we are able to target the product directly to the tumor. That's liplessis. Then you also have a companion diagnostic called DPR. Can yes. you tell us a little yes. bit about that? Yes. So the drug response predictor, so it's a DRP, you sorry, but it's, a, it's a, the drug response predictor is a, a you could say, really, a, I think, astonishing strong tool where you are not, I mean, if you look at some of the precision medicine we have today, for instance, Herceptin, it's used in breast cancer patients. And only the patients that got a HER2 gene, an active HER2 gene in their breast cancer, receives this product. And it's a very effective product for only those 20% of patients. Similarly, if we can identify who responds to cisplatin, but cisplatin is not a, you can say, a single solution. So we're looking at 205 different genes and they are being measured on, on the patient's tumor. So the patient's tumor can be, you can say, assayed, and we can see how, what is the likelihood that this patient is going to benefit from the product. That's a drug response predictor, and it works very nicely. Yeah, you have mentioned it a little bit here, but could you sum up what kind of results you have seen using your treatment concept? Yeah, so first, the, the drug response predictor for cisplatin, we evaluated that in lung cancer patients, and Basically, what was that if the DRP said that the patient had a 90% 90, 90 likelihood of benefit, the patient survived, so 90% of those patients survived for three years. This is lung cancer patients. It's a very hard to treat uh, cancer disease. They were all through surgery and they received cisplatin afterwards. If they were in the bottom 10%, the survival rate was only 40% for three years. So in, in the top 10, you have a 90% survival rate. In the bottom, there's a 40% survival rate. So we knew that the DRP can actually identify who would benefit from cisplatin. And then we took the liplessis into breast cancer patients and were able to see that we can, you can say, lift away the patients that will not benefit and have all the efficacy in a, in a top 20, 20% 20 of the patients get all the efficacy. And that puts, of course, a very important competition edge to our product, that now we can take this platinum, which is used to, to so many cancers, and identify, one, identify the ones that really is going to benefit. And then turning towards the financial side of things, with this acquisition now completed, what is the financial situation like? So uh, that's a good question. We have uh, finances for at least 18 months. 
I think we are in the, you could say, exact, oh, very similar situation to, to Rovac situation if there has, had been successful uh, development of the vaccine. That was that the idea was to go out and partner with a strong partner uh, with the with the vaccine, vaccine product uh, after phase 2B data. We now have, you could say, strong uh, data with our IC, which is the Liprasis and the DRP. And we we can see that this is a now really partnerable. We will spend time on improving the, you could say, the, the opportunities for the product. We aim to, to discuss with authorities whether we can put it into early breast cancer and whether we can also use it for, for, for lung cancer, what is called sort of neoadjuvant eating that you use it before you go to surgery. So that's the financial situation for the next 18 months. So could you just sum up for me finally, what is the focus for 2023? Yeah, so 2023 is to find a partner and to find a strong partner that can help us bring the product forward or also an acquisition would be okay. And then we've had an insight into Chosa Oncology, the technology and the focus for this coming year. Thank you so much for coming, Peter. Thanks a lot.